Hello everyone, welcome back to my RP2000 career in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I'm building a second Lynx Neo S in the second build slot so that if the first one does succeed in an uncrewed flyby of the moon, the second one can carry the crew and fulfill the contract. Uh, right now in the second build slot, it would still be finished in time to fulfill that contract, but of course still eventually it'll be in the first build slot and go faster. And we might need to make changes and build another one should I accidentally sacrifice some Kerbals. Uh, we will see. Anyway, let's finish up space exploration. We need to do mid-course corrections for the Odyssey Mars missions, which are trying to get into an orbit around Mars. Those are probes. And once after we do those, we will launch the test. And once we have a pod that can go to the moon and come back, of course, we just need to work on the lander, right? I think I'll do a lunar orbit rendezvous direct. In other words, send the lander over first and then have the pod rendezvous with it that way. It's my usual way, really. No, oh, our electric charge is not ideal right now. Let's see if we present a better face to the sun, whether that changes. Uh, this one's a little bit underpowered. Does it hibernate? Well, I mean, there's not much of a difference between idle and active on that antenna. This one's idle. I wonder if we could just shut it down. I guess not. I mean, can't they shut down antennas in real life? I mean, you could just shut down power to it, right? One would think. Okay, well this one, this one is potentially dying over here. So that's sort of changing. The rate at which it's losing power is getting better. Maybe there's an orientation that will work for us. Okay, well we have to do the maneuver. This ain't looking great, but the other one has the extendable solar panels, so there's still hope. Okay, well, this is going to be quick. Okay. Oh, we don't have forward R uh, downward facing RCS. Great. Um, I'm going to sneakily activate these four. <laughs> I mean, this one's probably dead anyway. Okay. Well, there it is, but yeah, and turning is gonna mess it up, but I need a way to cut power to an antenna. I'm not too sure why I can't do that. Well, I don't know how it's gonna go. Seems rather iffy right now. But we will not pay attention to it and hope for the best. <laughs> All right, back to Space Center, and we'll try with the other one. Well, this one just has the wrong orientation right now. But charge-wise, it is recharging just fine. But still, it doesn't have any downward-facing thrusters, which we really need since the burn is just 10 meters per second. Okay, well, we'll try with the main engine here. Ignition. Ooh, oh, okay, 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 uh, okay, stop. Okay, well, that's pretty good. I mean, that is pretty good. We just need to turn to the sun again. And, of course, that'll throw things off, but that's expected. Okay, so this one should at least work, hopefully. We will find out in 124 slash 5 days. All right. On to that crewed mission. Well, uncrewed mission testing a crewed lunar flyby. Okay, well, here's our rocket. <laughs> what can I say? I guess it's sort of like a Saturn one, uh, Saturn one, except you know, less interesting first stage, kind of. All right, SAS on, throttle is up. Let's see what I've forgotten. Ignition. 
We have 13 engines. And go. Has a healthy thrust weight ratio here. All right, we should be through max Q. Everything looking nominal so far. Liquid hydrogen boil off is pretty severe. Okay, uh, oh, I didn't have something to action group certain engines. And these don't throttle. Okay, well, that's something I forgot. Yeah, they don't throttle. Okay, we will have to action group some engines. Okay, staging. We have two Hydrolox engines here. Pretty tight right now, but that's not including the fuel in the service module, so I guess that's okay. And shut down. 209, let's call it 210 by 176 with enough fuel for the transfer. So that's good. No problems there. 45 tons in orbit, by the way. So that's a good reference. For an 800 ton rocket, that's not bad. That's better than 5% though. Part of that is this stage, so it's cheating. Okay, a little bit of inclination there, but that's not too bad. We can deal with that. Boil off is definitely happening. I don't think I even put MLI layers on here, did I? No MLI. Yeah, I didn't put MLI layers. So, might want to do that, but it doesn't seem like it's a big deal because we're going to dump this stage anyway. Probably more legit not to have it. Now, I should have gotten rid of the nose cap earlier. Now it's just debris in space and in low Earth orbit at that. Alright. Here we go for translunar injection. Both engines lit. Okay. These don't throttle. It's gonna be quick. Okay, well, I think I'll just do the rest with RCS. And... Well, we can do some of this stage's RCS. I was thinking of dumping it, but might as well use it. Okay. That's our transfer. Let's keep it right there. And we should, probably should have smacked this into the surface or something, but stage for now. We're not going to be concerned about that. We are going to be concerned that I didn't put supplementary comms on this. Solar panel array will be recovered? What do you mean? I, I don't want it to be recovered. Did I accidentally push trash part? Not mean to do that. Yeah, we don't really have long range comms on here, I don't think. So we're going to have to pick something up over at the moon end. Okay, well, before I accidentally lose something, let's point at the sun when it comes up. Might as well have our bottom end to the sun. Sound are in 79 meters per second, so not bad. We could have probably added a little bit more, since the other stage ended up with 200 meters per second. But it's not enough to push a lander around. We would need boosters on the rocket for that, and probably a pad upgrade. I mean, for the lander itself, we will need a pad upgrade, so... Okay, we're headed out. I mean, maybe the UHF on here is powerful enough. I doubt it. But these bands these days, and the ground stations, they're... Surprisingly powerful. Uh, 
Oh, we're losing power again. Oh, we lost an RCS block. That one. It begins. It begins. Oh, so the power was going even though it shouldn't have. So that too begins. Char to Blader Leak. That's fine. <laughs> we can deal with that. Yeah, the time warping issue with KSB and Stellar is going to be irritating for this sort of thing. We lost another block. Those two. Not the most convenient two to lose. Battery pack short circuit. Okay, definitely going to tune these probabilities down a bit, hoping that it actually works. Okay, we didn't really do uh, set up a flyby properly here. So, flyby has to be below 5,000 kilometers. Okay, this burn seems to get us to 770 kilometers and also have a good Earth periapsis, well, good enough anyway. There's the moon. Good thing this engine does appear to have gimbling because of our RCS ports having problems. Uh, with the two ports that we have, we probably can't translate very well like this. So, what is that? Uh, I can't get the periapsis. Oh, maybe we are up at 37 kilometers. I guess that's okay. 767 on this end, on the moon end. Okay, but we're going to turn. Turning with two ports is still fine. Translation is not. We could start those ports up there if we were in a serious pinch. We do end up with a very awkward sort of roll. Sun tracking error on that solar array. Yay. That's fine. I'm used to them not tracking the sun anyway. That's why we're still spinning up like this. Well, it's better for the power. Okay, if we had crew, this would be good enough. Okay, bye bye moon. Sun tracking error. Okay, this is gonna be a thing, huh? Okay, and we are in Earth SOI now. We have a negative periapsis, which would probably be too harsh. We've lost too many ports to make this easy. Uh, we'll activate those top ones. Hopefully they'll work. They are working. Okay, I'm going to go for 59.5 kilometers there. Comms didn't seem to be a problem. With a Kerbal on board, that will be even less of a problem. All right, service module jettison. Oh, it doesn't feel like I can control that. I probably should have had a controller on it. You... Oh no! What just... Oh, things were not on the right node, it would seem. That's the problem. Well, this doesn't have the aero shell, but it should still be able to survive in theory. <laughs> uh, this has gotten much more interesting. Okay, turn, turn, turn. Okay, things were not on the right node. That's interesting. Spacecraft communication failure, even. Uh, well, it can't actually do that, because it doesn't understand real antennas. But I should probably arm the parachutes now. Repair. Repair is a thing. Okay, that's blowing up. Really close by, so that's why I didn't go off 
That was quickly. Why did the arrow shell explode like first? <laughs> it's the heat protected one. Liquid methane leak. Wow, it's leaking pretty quickly too. Uh oh. Everything's overheating. Oh, I think those were the batteries. I think those were the batteries. I didn't even think about descent mode. I think we we're okay just going straight in like this. Though G forces are rough. Parachutes is still on. I don't have to worry about separating the arrow cap. We are coming straight down. We slow down better than usual because we don't have the arrow shell though. The arrow shell adds mass so the whole thing doesn't decelerate quite as quickly. Which actually means less g-force. Just a longer pass through the atmosphere potential to go up again but without that extra mass We slow down quite well, but then is it a re really a good test of the situation? I think it's okay though. I don't think we have to do it again. Well, it's all out of methane and oxygen, or any RCS control, but we're way past needing that. Alright, our parachutes are out. Somewhat more eventful test mission than we were intending. Okay, full parachute deployment, and we are at a mere 4.4 meters per second because, again, we don't have the shell, so we're much lighter. And we have splashed down. Well, I'm gonna just do a normal recovery this time, since we lost the shell and everything. That will be it for this pod. Now, I have no idea how we got things messed up, so let's edit this. So, when we decoupled this, it was attached to that instead of the heat shield. Right. Or that was attached to this instead of the node it's supposed to be on. Okay, and then it is on the heat shield. Up. Oh. So that part should be okay. We had a lot of thruster failures. Uh, we're not gonna solve that like this. We're going to attack O strap O scrap again. But I need to action group some engines down here. And just for the heck of it, I'll toss some MLL layers. We can only put ten apparently. Probably our tech level. Okay, so we will save that version and save edits. I'm not gonna put a supplementary antenna. I think that worked out all right, and we'll have a Kerbal inside. And we will proceed with having a Kerbal inside next time. Hopefully that'll be okay. But for now, let's turn back to the Mars missions arriving, our little probes, and we are trying to fulfill Mars orbit uncrewed, but more importantly, the position satellite in a stationary, stationary orbit of Mars. So there's a particular orbit that we need to get into, and right now we're expecting that only one of them will have power in order to do that. Well, this has retained power be probably because it was not keeping track of it while we weren't paying attention to it. But then we have barely any signal, but that's still good enough signal. But it's going to run out, and we're not going to play around with that. We're not going to pretend that that was not going to be the case. I don't know, it's still... Okay, I think only in Time Warp was it still trying to have power, but it still has comms somehow. I don't know. 
Let, let's see what it does. Can I do science? Well, I transmitted science without any power, but the science right now doesn't really track with the power at all. I don't know what's up with that. So we got science. <laughs> Can we make orbit with this? I mean, I'm not in charge of... Okay, now, now we're losing comms occasionally. We probably actually want to be on this side with the periapsis. Uh, I'm gonna jump to ship. I'm I'm not gonna mess with this one. Okay, signal is weak, but there. Power. Let's just make sure stays there. The question is whether I want to flip it to the opposite side. Oh, but we can't. We can't because of the direction. Oh wait, the orbit direction seems to be the other way around. Okay, well we have to go this way. Okay, that will be good. So we'll do this 130 meter per second correction once we get into Mars SOI. Proceeding. Correction time. Okay, ignition. Okay, a little bit more than that. Oh, we don't have that one facing ones. Got another one in you? Yeah. Okay, quick ignition. Okay, a little bit high there, but all right. So we are like that. That's not too bad. And over here, we would like to capture, maybe build in the inclination correction right there. Though, of course, normally it'd be better higher up, but we're already paying so much down here. That's not too much more. And for convenience, we'll just pull down to the top of that. So we don't have to do too many more burns. After we fulfill the contract, we'll see about getting science from Phobos and Deimos and all. The question is, we have to make sure that we're over that area. So that's important. I guess this is some sort of synchronous orbit. And on to Mars. Let me check the science. Well, we did sneakily do it with the other probe. On arrival, we'll be right over the thing. And we might want to start this burn a little bit early. The horizon's going to get in the way. Up, oh, new stuff here. Yep, I think it'll be best to start early, so let's go. And staging. We have a good engine here. But a super long duration one, so, well, 12 minutes, but long enough that we need to be worried about the comms. Ooh. That comm line is looking worse than I thought. Oh boy. No, this is not looking good. I didn't think we'd be cutting it so close to the planet. We've lost comms. We don't have anything else around here. Oh no. I should have started way earlier. Oh, um... It checkmarked Mars orbit. I don't know why. I mean, we're, we're gonna make orbit. We're not gonna maintain stability for very long after making orbit, but... We didn't really make Mars orbit. I'm gonna have to review what that says. Right? Hmm. Seems like I have to adjust the contract. Well, we're going to not be doing what I wanted to do. Oh, it'll start doing that, huh? I don't suppose... No. <laughs> no, I can't stop it. 
Well, what we're going to do is we're going to send a bunch of these, and some will just capture high in orbit to provide comms, and only the last one will try to do the mission. So this will stay in orbit around, around Mars. I don't know what its power situation is going to end up being. The panels don't track. But it will be in orbit. It can help with comms. Can at least have as a last ditch attempt smart ASS turn this way. Okay, that's the end of its fuel. That's here, we have comms, it just couldn't fulfill the mission. Oh, uh there was some signs. Midlands, amazingly enough. So yeah, that was the fate of our two little Mars orbiters. Uh, well, Mars is a bit hard, let's face it. But we'll send more over. We've got plenty of time on that contract. And we are set up for the crude lunar flyby for next time. Uh, I'll see what other contracts we can do, but I think we should probably focus on things. I'll take a look at that Mars orbit contract. So lots of stuff to think about, but for now, Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.